Hey beautiful, this is Anton and in this video I'm going to teach you and show you how to answer some of the more common uh, interview questions when it comes to Linux. These questions are very very often asked and most likely will involve some kind of a command line answer. And for this video I'm going to be using one of the Arch Linux distributions called Manjaro but you can actually use anything you want, it works the same. Uh, so let's start with the first uh, question that's often asked and that's uh, can you find the IP address using command line? And the most common answer is uh, if config. Uh, so this will actually give you your IP address. If you scroll up here, you'll find out that your um, IPv4 address is right here. This is mine, um, yours will be different. But there's actually a newer way of doing this by doing the following command, IP address show. This will also give you your address um, and will actually give you quite a lot of other information as well. So here's my IP address using this command. Another common question is, how do you check what kernel version you're actually running right now? And the command for this is very simple. You just type your name uh, followed by dash A. And here we go, I'm running Manjaro and uh, it gives you the kernel version right here. The third question could be to check if a certain Linux service is running and if it's actually connected to something. The command normally is um, sudo netstat, but you can actually add a few flags to it to make it even more specific. If you add these five flags, tulpen, uh, you'll actually get all of your netstat related services uh, with potential connections here. And without those flags, you'll actually get a lot of information and it'll probably even take a few seconds to process all of this. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that you may not need. Question four might relate to uh, mounting. Like for example, how do you mount something on Linux or how do you check what's already mounted? Now, all of this is accessible through the mount command or by going into uh, devices mount folder. So typing just mount will actually show you all of your mounts currently. There's quite a lot for me. Uh, or you can go to your devices folder uh, and then take a look at all of the devices that you can actually mount. Like for example, if something in here is not mounted like this, uh, this is one of the hard drives that's already mounted, you could type something like this to actually mount it to this new location called new drive. And in this case, it's under my home Anton folder. Um, now the thing is, this has to be done in sudo and so if I try to run this, it will tell me only root can do that. Uh, but here you can actually impress your interviewer by doing the following. If you do sudo exclamation point exclamation point, it will automatically launch the previous command using the sudo command. And in this case, I can't really mount this because it's already mounted. Now another typical question might be, so how do you learn more about something? Like for example, command or a certain function. And that's of course using the manual command, man. So here I can actually go ahead and learn more about the list command by going through this long, long tutorial. Uh, one of the more important ones though is this one right here, learning about how to use uh, VI. Um, as a matter of fact, this is probably one of the most important visual editors that you can learn and this a uh, really, really good kind of a tutorial that takes you, uh, I think it's about like half an hour. Um, if you go through all of this right here, it will teach you um, how to use this really well because VI is by default available on all Linux, Linuxes, uh, but um, Nano that I like to use personally is not. So before you interview, make sure to catch up on how to use VI uh, or Vim in that case. Another question might ask you, how do you execute several commands all at once in the same single line? And that's using semicolons. So let's just say I want to list all of the files I have right now. Then I want to jump into the devices folder. Uh, I want to list all of the files that, there. And then I want to return back to my home folder. Uh, and then maybe just for fun, list all of the files there as well. And so here's that long uh, series of commands, but all in a single line. Another typical question is, so how much space has been actually uh, taken by everything in, on your hard drive right now? And also, how do you check uh, how big a certain folder is? And the command for this is very simple, du-sh. So this will actually give me a total space on my hard drive that's been used by everything. But if I wanna check, let's say, uh, my desktop folder, I can do the same, but add the name of the folder, and it will tell me that my desktop folder is very, very little, a few kilobytes. Next question is, how do you check how much memory is actually being taken in terms of RAM? Uh, so there's actually several ways of checking this. I think one of the more popular ones is VMstat. Uh, you can also do top, um, which will tell you 
essentially both the memory and also the CPU usage. Um, some Linuxes also have HTOP, which is slightly better looking than top. Uh, and here it's a little bit more colorful or slightly more interactive. But one of the older ways is actually by using the concatenate command directly and looking at a uh, proc meminfo. And here you'll actually see the direct usage of your RAM um, from everything. And so this is kind of how you check the memory. How about the actual processes? So for example, what processes are running, how much memory they're taking and so on. So PSAUX command uh, will actually give you all of this information. Uh, but if you're just worried about, let, let's say the most memory intensive processes, the top ones, that's once again, top command. So here you'll actually see everything about those processes. And you can usually use this to uh, choose one to, to close. Like for example, the ones that use the most memory and, they, and are not particularly useful can actually be then closed using the kill command. So for example, let's say I'm looking around and I found this process called Audacity that I'm using to record uh, voice is actually using too much uh, memory and too much CPU and I wanna close it. So then what I would have to do is basically type kill Audacity or kill, uh, PID number of Audacity, which in this case would be right here, 19087. And um, it would then actually close the Audacity and no longer wasted memory. But if you're actually asked to check on a specific process, like you want to find out uh, how much memory and CPU specific process actually um, waste, you can type PSAUX um, and then use the pipe and the grep, which is basically a, a way to search uh, your computer uh, to find more about a certain process. So, he so here is all of the information about Audacity that we could find um, from our system. And then if your next question is, how do you kill this process? Like I said before, you basically just do uh, kill. Uh, in this case, it will just type the PI PID of this particular process and then kill it. But I'm not going to be doing this right now because I'm actually recording this video using Audacity. Anyway, next question would be, how can you actually give or take away certain permissions to let's say a process or even a user? Now, obviously uh, this is done using plus and minus, and there are actually five specific flags that normally you would be using. There's U for users, um, G for group, O for others, and A for all. And the uh, normal sort of permissions here that you could give would be uh, plus R for reading, uh, plus W for writing, plus X for executing or making file executable. And let's say you wanna actually take away all of the write except for read writes from something, you would just do this. So then uh, the particular object would only be readable, not writable and not executable. In other words, let's uh, demonstrate this by making a random file uh, and we're going to give it basically everything, read, write and execute. Uh, okay, so in this case, I forgot to enter the name of the file. Here we go. So now uh, this particular file, if we actually look at it, has, as you can see, all of the rights uh, given to it. So readable, writable, and executable. However, if I take away those rights and uh, basically look at this file again, you'll see that it now has absolutely no rights and you can't do anything with it. You can't even open it anymore. So that's kind of how you would do this. And let's just erase this uh, empty file. And as you can see, as soon as I try to remove it, it actually asks me, do you want to remove this empty file? Like why, why do you even have it? Anyway, uh, moving on to the last question, number 12. How do you check uh, how much free space you actually have left? Now this is typically done either using the F command and specifically here, you can actually use flag uh, minus H or you can use DF to check for a specific uh, volume. So here, if we want to find out how much space there is on, uh, let's say SDA4, um, we're gonna go and type that and it will actually tell us this is how much you have left and this is how much you're using. And I think this is a pretty easy command to use. So definitely not something you're gonna forget anytime soon. Anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to do in this video. I wanted to show you 12 most common questions that you might be asked during an interview related to Linux. And hopefully this helped you. Anyway, thank you for watching. Subscribe, leave a like. Let me know what else you'd like to see in the next video. And, and we're actually are going to do a follow-up video with a little bit more detail on both the interview process, but also on some of the questions you might be asked. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.